Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, cameras in the Corgi Engine and how you can customize them to suit your needs. The first thing you'll notice if you open any demo scene included in the engine is that um, you'll have two cameras in the scene. The first one is the main camera, that's the one here. And here you can see it's camera pre preview, it renders um, the action. And then you have the UI camera. It's usually positioned outside of the the scene, but um, uh, basically you can you can move it around anywhere and position it anywhere in your scene. Uh, it won't change the result. Uh, what it does is it renders the UI, as the name implies. Um, the UI is made of uh, a bunch of stuff. So you have uh, the HUD, which displays your avatar, your uh, health bar, jetpack bar stuff like that, um, but also uh, a number of other stuff like uh, the time splash, something that is displayed uh, whenever you freeze time in the engine. Uh, you have a fader that is used uh, to transition from scene to scene, just a, a black screen. You will have all the mobile uh, controls, arrows, joystick buttons, um, but also the points um, and, and or, yeah, the, the Pose splash screen, um, stuff like that. Um, most of the time, all of this stuff is disabled and only called whenever you need it. And if you select um, your UI camera and your main camera, you will see here both uh, camera previews and the the main game uh, will be a mix of both with the UI camera superimposed over uh, the regular camera, and that's that's what you get. There's not much, much else to know about the UI camera script. Um, so we have, uh, if, if we have a look at what it contains, uh, the, the prefab, you'll see that there's this camera component, obviously. Um, then we have a GUI manager script. It's a really basic script that will um, only take into, uh, into parameters uh, from its inspector. You have a way to bind. Uh, what what is the post splash screen that it's supposed to display when you press pause? Uh, where are the arrows? Where are the points? Stuff like that. So it's really just basic binding. If you want to change that, uh, feel free to do that. And uh, then we have an input manager script. It's just set on the UI camera for convenience because um, it will reference um, the arrows, the joystick, stuff like that. So it, it usually comes together. Uh, with the mobile controls, so that's the reason why it's on the same um, game object, but of course you can put it anywhere you want. Now let's have a look at the regular camera script. Uh, so here I am in a 2D scene, I have my camera control script here, and uh, as you can see this component can be added to any camera. Uh, it could be autographic or perspective. Uh, let's, let's have a look at an example of that. Um, if I go to uh, demos and Kogi 3D. I opened the, the 3D level. And uh, here I have my 3D camera. As you can see, it uses the same script. But if I press play, um, you will see that it's uh, um, positioned at an angle and uh, it, it still follows my character moves in anticipation. Uh, when I move left, you see it's positioned uh, to the left. When I move right, it's positioned to the right. So let's go back to a, a 2D level and have a look at how you can tweak your camera control script to um, make it really yours. So uh, if I just press play, I have my main camera selected here. Um, let's see what I can change. So by default, um, the camera will try to center on your character and have it at the center of the screen. You can apply a camera offset at all times. So for example, if I apply a three here and three here, as you can see, it repositions the camera and it will now uh, follow my character applying that offset at all times. Uh, if I reset that to zero, zero, I can also change the look distance. So the look distance is the offset that is applied to the camera when you walk. So as you can see, when I uh, walk towards the right of the screen, uh, my camera moves slightly uh, to the left or to the right to uh, accommodate and so I can see further and avoid you know, obstacles, enemies. Um, right now it's set to three, 
so it will add um, free to the x value of the camera and loop towards its value if i uh, set it to 10 for example um, i'm now seeing much further when i walk towards the left or towards the right of um, my level i can also change uh, the look ahead trigger uh, so I'll, I'll leave that to 10 so you can see the difference right now i need to move uh, by a value of 0 0.1 uh, to activate the horizontal look distance so as you can see it's really uh, almost instantaneous um, but if I set it to maybe 5 uh, you can see that I can now move towards the left much longer before it starts activating uh, the horizontal look distance so uh, I could walk for, for quite a long time before it starts uh, moving and it will move much slower then uh, there's the manual up and down look distance so if i press up oh, i need to move a bit i guess if i press up i can see uh, above me and if i press down and if the level is uh, big enough i'll um, move the camera down so uh, here you can change that value uh, if i put 10 here you'll see that when i look up i can look much further up and same thing when I look down um, then we have the movement speed uh, so if I set my values back to normal so let's say this one I'm just gonna put uh, 0.1 here so yeah I'm back to uh, having my left and right movement uh, horizontal look distance uh, really fast so uh, as you can see when I stop moving the camera resets to its, its position i can change that reset speed here um, if i increase the value uh, for example if i put five you can see that i can trigger the speed but it it gets back to normal really fast uh, if i put 10 it's even faster um, there's also the speed at which the camera moves in like in that first movement um, i can increase it to let's say 10 so if I increase it uh, it's actually slower and that's because I need to put a small value if I put a small value as you can see it moves much faster um, then I can change the minimum and maximum zoom so uh, I'm gonna put back uh, regular values here um, I can change the minimum zoom so using just these sliders I can decide that the minimum zoom is uh, 16 and the max zoom is 18 and I might now have you know much uh, a much larger view of my level of course I need to adapt maybe the background and stuff like that but it's still working um, and then uh, there's a bunch of uh, effects here so we have the parallax effects we'll see what it does and how it works uh, just after that and then we have the post-processing behavior script that's a script by unity that you can decide to add and uh, it will add a bunch of effects uh, so if i select this one for example you'll see that um, you can set color grading you can set uh, depth of field motion blur stuff like that you just have to uh, you know click on these and uh, change the values and, and then you have your effects um, there's um, also an option to disable these on mobile so um, that way you don't have to uh, manually uh, deset them on each on each of your cameras so if you just uh, check this box and compile for mobile it will automatically disable the post-processing behavior scripts on all your cameras Right, the last thing you want to know about uh, the camera system in the Corgi engine is uh, parallax. Parallax is the idea that when you have um, a game, uh, a side-scrolling game, you can have an impression of depth. And uh, in 3D, that comes, you know, out of the box, as you have, like, for example, here the shadows, or you could have background elements, trees, and so on, that would move um, at a different speed than the platforms uh, you're working on but uh, when you do that in 2d well uh, 
you have to implement it or you can use a 3d camera but if you want to stick to a 2d camera for a number of reasons uh, the corgi engine will allow you to do that uh, at really no cost at all so um just to show you that i can go to uh, my misa one level and if i press play you'll see that uh, i'm just gonna bring back that window um you see that the mountain uh, moves at a different speed than uh, for example the trees here creating an impression of depth so uh, how does it work well it's really simple uh, if you look at your main camera script uh, component you'll see that it has a parallax camera script and if you look at um, elements in your in your level for example if i select well the the mountains the background uh, so the background is a, an empty game object containing all the, the mountains you will see that it has a parallax element script and on it you can define a relative um, horizontal speed and vertical speed so uh, these are usually good values but if we, i set them to two you'll see what it does it will multiply um, the, the relative speed of the mountains and background elements and now they well would be easier if you can see the game window yeah uh, so as I move you see that it moves uh, the background elements well twice as fast as I move so um, obviously that's not something that you want to keep you can also decide that they move in opposite direction uh, relative to the camera and that's how it would look like um, that's not usually something that you want but uh, you know for some reason it's possible and of course you can have uh, any number of, of layers like that you could have um, background mountains and then more mountains in the background moving at different speed and that's how you create that impression of depth using a lot of layers i don't have much more to say about uh, cameras in the corgi engine i hope uh, you've learned something today and uh, see you next time bye